Hello everyone and welcome to my year 5 season 4 dual tier list. I will follow the same format as last season using all the heroes matchup spreadsheet to rank heroes. To summarize, if you're new, I, with some fellow competitive players, have made a spreadsheet ranking every matchup in the game out of 10, assuming that both players are of equal skill. For example, if the spreadsheet on the line of hero X and column he of hero Y says 6, that means that the matchup between hero X versus hero Y is 6 to 4 for the hero X. The number on the spreadsheet is attributed to the hero on the line, not the column. Now you know how to read the spreadsheet as well. Using this system of ranking matchups, we have for each hero an average number that determines their ranking. This number is also expressed as the average outcome out of 10 versus a random hero. I hope my explanation sufficed and you understood the system we are using to rank heroes. So let's get into it. First of all, what is new this season? Shinobi rework, which made a significant difference in the placement for him. Orochi nerfs, which significantly impacted his standing, he was hurt the most in this patch, Shugoki nerf, which dropped him from S tier, and Raider nerfs, which affected him by 0.75 matchup points, a substantial change, but due to him having an amazingly high score last season, he remained S tier. I have also made minor changes to the matchup scores as I revisited every hero, but the most significant changes in the tier list from the last one are Hitokiri and Lawbreaker placements. And that is with all the context I have to give, let's start ranking heroes. Once again, we will be doing this side by side with the all heroes matchup spreadsheet. Uh, we have the same tiers as last time, it's just that the requirement to qualify for a certain category has changed. For example, to be S tier, it's now 6.5, I think it used to be 7 plus, I'm not fully sure. And I tweaked with the other numbers as well. And yeah, let's get start, started directly into it. Uh, we will start with S tier, work our own down, just as before. Uh, we can take a look at the tier, at the All Heroes matchups, which is this one. <laughs> uh, and the first hero we have this time is Shinobi. So Shinobi is the one that got reworked. Shinobi is the character I have to talk to because it's kind of an interesting placement. I'm pretty sure everyone was looking forward the most to see where I placed Shinobi. And the answer to that is I place him on top one, the best character in the game right now when it comes to duels. Uh, the reason for that is a couple of <laughs> There are a couple of reasons for that. And the first thing that I want to mention is the fact that he is one of the characters in the game right now that has absolutely unpunishable mix-up from neutral on new reaction. If you want to punish Shinobi, you have to make a full read. And the thing about making reads against Shinobi is that if you start reading against Shinobi, then the matchup gets way more favored for him. <laughs> Thus, you should somewhat keep reacting, because otherwise he has better odds against you. But even if you react, you just get no damage, you know? It also matters on, like, your reaction rate. If you react enough to have the, let's say, expected expected value of his kick, uh, let's say, to a negative number, because you're never going to be able to do damage from him unless you read it. If that expected value of negative number is lower uh, than the expected value of you reading, which is also a negative number because uh, his mix-up is favorable for Shinobi, not for you, then it's better for you to react than to uh, read, which is usually the case for most high-level players. They react, they don't read it. If they read, they do a hard read. But basically what I'm trying to say is that Shinobi from neutral has an unpunishable kick on reaction. You can punish it with a hard read only. And what I said is until now is that hard reads are not profitable. You you want to react anyway, even if you cannot punish it. He has excellent defense with the uh, with double dodge that can first of all options select bash and undodgeable mix-ups and also other mix-ups like for example a chargeable a warden bash or chargeable warmonger bash. I think he can iframe 
those patches as well. Uh, on top of it, he has an outstanding dodge attack, which is also really good at option selecting. For example, you can option select with it like deflecting on light timing and then kicking in case the opponent heavy faints into a guard break. That is an option select for him. And there are many more, uh, but what you need to understand is that his dodge kick is one of the best dodge attacks in the game. Not just because it's a dodge bash, but taking into account that he also has a deflect combined with it, if, which if I'm not wrong, it has 38 or 36 damage, almost confirmed. And yeah, that's that's crazy. <laughs> so, so far he has really good neutral offense. Not necessarily really fretful, but on the long run, he's just gonna win, you know, uh, since it's unpunishable. And he has really, really good defense. On top of it, he has, on his defense, on top of it, he also has the best parry punish and the best deflect punish in the game. Take into account that kick is almost undodgeable. Uh, for now, I hope it gets changed. That's a bug. That shouldn't be like this. But for now, you have 30 damage confirmed on a parry most of the time and 38 damage on deflect as well most of the time. Usually you will get it. And if they get nerfed, it doesn't mean that the mix-up become uh, the deflect punish becomes only 14 damage it becomes a mix-up with its own expected value um he also has undodgeable heavy or and kick mix-up just like a lot of heroes that nowadays that are getting reworked um it's good it's good but compared to his neutral mix-up even even if it's uh reactable and unpunishable I still believe his neutral game is better than uh, his undodgeable heavy or kick mix-up because with undodgeable heavy kick mix-up, uh, you can do a lot of damage, but it's also a pun it's also unsafe option. If the opponent makes the right read, he gets the punish. Until now, with his uh, moveset, if the opponent gets the right read, he doesn't get to be punished. So, yes, it is good. It does add up for that because... It even if you can get punished, you do have more damage to do. Usually you can do 29 damage. Actually, not 29 damage. Usually, in reality, you usually do only one guard break worth of damage. Because if you are going to play the most optimal, you should probably uh, be fainting your undodgeable heavy into a guard break to catch people dodging. To also be safe in case they, uh, in case they don't dodge and they wait for the parry. And to also... But and you also only lose a little bit of damage uh, if you do this instead of just letting the heavy go while being extra safe. So yes, it is kind of a good mix up, but just the fact that it can be punishable from time to time when the opponent makes right read makes it weaker than his neutral mix up, or at least in my eyes. He has really decent chain pressure with his uh, twenty nine damage unblockable. It can be twenty six if you want to continue mixing mix up. Uh, the mix-up, you know, you don't have to do the full sickle rain. If you do, the opponent can just backwalk your follow-up attack after you backflip. But if you do only two hits, you can, which means three damage less, you can uh, still remain in frame advantage and do damage and go through your kick undodgeable mix-up infinite. And for cons, because I have to mention some minuses for him, uh, he has bad out of stamina punishes. Like, I, I think it's one light into neutral heavy or something uh or neutral heavy light pretty bad anyway less than 40 damage i think and he also has uh 120 hp it's kind it's kind of low <laughs> it's you, you do see the difference when playing a uh, higher hp and lower hp player and the higher level you get the more important hp becomes because the because the little things are what makes you win usually and assassin card the, another little thing that uh, adds up to shinobi's cards but anyway his upsides outweigh his downsides for sure does i still and they outweigh with a uh, big significance so i really think right now he's uh, the best duelist in the game not by far but uh he is in my eyes is really close to Aramusha, who is our second duelist. I'm sure, this is no surprise. You've seen me rank Aramusha before in S tier, in S -tier so he just remained 
it just stayed in his rank. He actually kind of got better indirectly by his opponents in other S tiers getting worse. And yeah, he's just an amazing fucking character. I'm only going to talk about the characters that uh, have been changed, obviously. And the next character that I'm going to be talking about is Raider. So Raider is one of the characters that got changed. Uh, nerfs were only to his damage, but they weren't. They were significant. They were just not that significant. Like uh, he, here are the changes: forty-two damage to zone instead of forty-eight, but it's still an excellent tool, but just has slightly worse odds, and he just has lower auto stamina. But it's still amazing. Forty-two damage, unblockable. It's good. Ten damage for, for stunning tap instead of twelve. This is probably just as influential as the zone change. Maybe even more. Like, it doesn't seem a significant change, but overall, you'll probably have to do one, two extra stunning taps to kill an opponent. And as I said, the devil is in details. Those small things add up. And they did some, like, irrelevant nerfs to his top heavies, like, I think three, four damage less on each one of them, but that's something you wouldn't have been using anyway in duels. Like, the only way I see you'd use a top heavy is in a out of stamina punish, but and that's like an unoptimal one that allows you to continue chain pressure. But other than this, his top heavy's nerves were not affected at all. So, in my eyes, overall, I still think he's a very powerful hero. He's not necessarily the best anymore. Uh, but I do think he's still S tier, and I still do think he's a monster against every hero. There are some heroes that he struggles against, for example, let's even look at the all heroes matchup. I want you guys to use this and understand how powerful it is. So here, this is Raider. We can look at his spreadsheet, and he has no negative matchups, which is really good. But he has... Uh, 5-5 five, five matchups, for example, against Warmonger. He has 5-5 five, five matchup. The reason he has 5-5 five, five matchup against Warmonger and not somewhere, someone similar like Warden that has six, uh, has a 6 matchup is because of Warmonger's amazingly powerful Heavy Prey Punish. That's making the matchup super unbalanced. He also has, obviously, 5-5 five, five with the other s tiers, And in general, after the nerfs, some small changes were made, like for example, some matchups that were 7 to 3 in his favor became like 6 to 4 in his favor. But it's still very, very powerful and it's still S tier. So, yeah. Now let's move on to the next heroes. So, first of all, I will be placing the heroes. Uh, I will only stop at heroes that I want to talk about. The other responses are the same. I mention every time until now and then my dual tier list. So I'm not going to be repeating myself over and over from now. So Shaman is next in eight year, just like before. Now, one that went up a bit is Mr. Kyoshin. If I can find him, if I can hear his. So Kyoshin, Warden, where is Warden? No surprise in Warden. Now here is the interesting one, Shugoki. So Shugoki is the one that got nerfed. Shugoki was S tier last tier list. Now he is just A tier. Bottom A tier if you allow me to place the new hero. And this is all A tier. So his nerfs were significant. Like he used to be S tier. And the difference between S tier and A tier is a bit significant. Like A tier, they're powerful heroes, but they do have bad matchups and they can lose to other heroes but as tiers as you've you seen they just have no negative matchups but that's not the that's not the case with shigoki first of all his biggest nerf by far is the removal of 54 damage health swings on guard breaks uh if you remember he used to be able to get a guard break uh throw like baseball throw i don't know what the fuck demon ball into a wall and then if uh, he was close enough, he could input a hog to get a to get a total of fifty four damage health swing, forty four damage, twenty four from the demon ball, twenty from the hog, and ten damage, ten HP healed uh, from the hog. 
in total a 54 damage health swing which was amazingly broken especially because we are making this tier list on the ranked arena map uh that's amazingly powerful and because you'd get it a lot of the time so the removal of that kind of affected his placement a lot in my eyes still has 36 damage on a guard break with a wall nearby but i mean it compares to what he used to have but it's still 20 no 18 damage less like that's significant um a big reason for why he is solid is because his defensive capabilities with headbutt uh being able to interrupt everything and the only way to punish him uh is through a dodge attack makes it a really powerful defensive tool um i actually think like like it's probably the same dodge attack as shinobi shinobi can double dodge but the difference between shinobi dodge attack and uh Shino shinobi and shugoki dodge attack is that shinobi has a deflect which amplifies his dodge attack uh shugoki doesn't have a deflect but to be fair he does have a solid guard and when he dodges he keeps his guard so that's a bonus as well you should keep that in mind and one more thing that you should know about shinobi that you probably know instinctively but never really heard or like thought about it this way is just that he has control of the battle because of his heavies uh, because of him using a lot of heavies and his moves are being around uh, charging heavies and doing chip damage he will just always have frame advantage and because the fact that he has hyper armor into 400 ms into a heavy he has hyper armor 400 ms into a heavy uh, he will just be able to trade even if he's out of frame advantage with you so to conclude he's still the same shigoki just before the broken 54 uh, damage coverage punish and just slightly lower damage on his heavies. He did get a hit significantly, but he was strong enough to withhold the nerfs and not drop altogether. And that is it with A tier. We are moving on to B tier. Uh, I'm going to be placing some characters. This is all standard. This is the ranking they had last time as well. Around this ranking, but the next character that it is interesting is Hitokiri. Let me place her. She's there. So Hitokiri, she had a really low placement last, last time. I think I placed her around 5. This time I placed her in B tier. And this in Heroes, she has, let's find her. Hitokiri, she has 5.61 matchup. So, I quite... Let's say I quite placed her slightly higher than last time, even though no changes happened to her. So the reason for this is because I've had a change of thought and because uh, last time I placed her because of the surprisingly reactability of her kick on level one timing, which still a valid, which is still a valid thing and is true. The only mistake I have made is overestimating how much this impacts the hero. She can still counter this by delaying kick slightly and then fainting it to make it genuinely unreactable. But the problem is, last time when I had this argument, I said that, well, that this just opens up so many more options for the opponent. For example, if you take longer to charge the kick, then they can uh, start dodge attacking, for example. If you don't know, for example, if a Hitokiri uh, after, let's say, a heavy hit stun, buffer fades the kick into a guard break, you cannot dodge attack. She, she will simply guard break you out of it. But this extra window allows your opponent to dodge attack, almost always, and also allows you to, to punish Hitoki more severe when you are reading a faint into guard break. Because if you, you used to, let's say, predict that she's not going to do anything, you would light to interrupt or do damage or so depending on the character but now because she has more time to charge her uh bash you can like even punish her with a heavy that goes into chain pressure as well so you have to take that into account too so overall the mix-up does get worse because of this but i still think she has positive odds i still think she still like even with this option she's still very good 
Uh, it's just that she just has a slightly harder time getting uh, damage with her keeping stuff. But it's still very powerful. And it's still an, a read that your opponent has to make. It's just that the read, because of this uh, small quirk, let's say it, uh, gets slightly more favored for the uh, defender because the defender gets an extra option that Hitoki has to account for. And for the other option where he used to uh, call out that, let's say, call Hitokiri's bluff that she would fade into Garbrick, uh, now he gets to d do double the damage than before. But I do like her standing right now. I, uh, I mean, I do think she could maybe go up a bit. Like, I wouldn't mind, let's say. I mean, not that I wouldn't mind, but I wouldn't. it wouldn't be out of the question for her to be here. Or for her to be here. Maybe here is too much. But around this area, I'd, I'd put her. Uh, right now, I'd, I'll put her a bit here. You can tell me what you think about it. Obviously, it's up to change. I'm, this tier list is always ever, over, ever improving. Like I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to learn from mistakes and always improve and make it better, so we can all, as a community, have a good tier list to look up to. Uh, I made a mistake last time. Please forgive me. I have corrected it this time. So let's move on with B tier. We have the Bashi Bashi heroes right now, Black Prior, we have Mr. Conqueror, these guys were placed a bit lower last time, I placed them a bit higher this time, uh, here you can see Black Prior 50-50, wait, 5-50, Conqueror with Conqueror, 5-54, oops, this is actually supposed to be like this, god damn. Uh, and black bear 50 50 and then we have another one with 50 50 is gladiator where is he where is he and he's here so this is bt this is s a b and now let's move on to c and to c we have probably potentially one of the most controversial placements in this tier list so let's get on with it mr orochi hello c tier so his matchup right now, let's see, let's see, because it's important. He has a 5.11, what? Oh, I, yes, yes, 5.11 matchup. So uh, this is why I put this 5.11, because the highest character in city here has 5.1. Uh, he's still on the positive. Let's take a look at the last year's matchup, and let's see. How it was last time. So Orochi had 5.75. My guy dropped 65 points. Almost as bad as Shigoki. Probably even worse because if you think about it, dropping 65 when you have less is more than dropping 75 when you have so much. Like, yes, he did overall in points, he did get nerfed, he did get uh let's say chopped less. But by ratio, 65 means way more for uh, him because he had a lower score than Shigoki. But let, let's get into the reasons. He dropped from A tier to B tier with two changes. The removal of undodgeable property on the dash light and the removal of recovery cancel on rift kick. His forward dodge light is not undodgeable anymore. The move that made the kick somewhat unreactable, and I say somewhat because people could still react to the bash, even before the nerf, but the mix of dash lights and kicks made it harder for an opponent to react. The reason for this is because is that you would force the opponent to do a lot of fast reactions inputs on dash light, which takes away from his energy and focus enough to allow some kick to slip in. So basically what I'm saying is that dodge light was not necessarily a tool to make the mix-up unreactable but a tool to loosen up the opponent's defense enough to make room to land some kicks and that was removed <laughs> that was just completely removed my friend just and this also made him this undodgeable light also made him the king of assassins he would destroy every assassin in the game he would have 
too good of a mix-up against every character that would dodge uh, and lose their guard. But this has removed. This has been removed. He fucking. I don't want to say he fucking sucks now. He can still land sometimes the kick and the zone on high level players never like to be fair even watch my latest video where i fought like a competitive player that actively practices his reactions and see like how a how bad i was able to do with Orochi. like I, I literally couldn't land a kick at all i would get parry on all my storm rushes which is to be expected uh, i'd say every comp player with a little bit of practice can definitely do that and that's why i placed him on C tier, mediocre heroes. He's the uh, he's the logo of mediocre heroes. And uh, funnily enough, the next characters that follow mediocre heroes are literally all the fucking uh, Wulin cast. Jun Jung first. Then we have Zan Hu. Then we have Nuxha, 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 Nuxha. Then we have Tian Di, and then we have. Griffin. God damn, I remember when Griffin used to be the best and the most very hated. And the community killed him once again. Very, very nice. Uh, let's go to D tier now. Disadvantage heroes. Disadvantage heroes. So here is another controversial one. I, I, I wouldn't say controversial necessarily this time. It was controversial last time. I'm really curious to see the feedback on this uh the, the, the feedback the reaction on this placement but uh let's go on with it it's d tier it's lowbringer so lowbringer first of all i would like to admit i don't really know how to place this hero i would say he's easily the most challenging hero to place like he has quite the potential on paper if you think about it because he gets access quite to the powerful mix-up with one parry or bash like he has one he has like a chain bash that is literally undodgeable with a dodge attack. If you try to uh unparable unpunishable with a dodge attack, if you try to punish it, you might even get parried. And uh has one of the best unblockables, very fast, high damage, chains into <laughs> unpunishable mix-up that also changed back into the unblockable. So like if he gets into this like somewhat infinite, lowering he can take so much damage into you at answer like again with the low bringer video i made like that is probably the best you have to wait fucking hours to get the parry but once you get the parry you can fucking destroy but 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 we are underlooking the downsides of having no way to open youtube and i also thought about this like let's see people do play low bringer and low bringer is let's say uh practiced against one thing you would have to do to literally drop all his offensive capabilities from neutral is to just learn how to parry his neutral heavies on reaction if you think about it if you parry his neutral heavies from reaction he has absolutely no way of getting into his mix-up or pairing it to a certain level where it's uh, not profitable for him to uh use heavies from neutral to get it to chain and i don't think that is really hard i think we can make it not profitable for him to use his heavies in the chain by just even reading it and have being a bit lucky so i think this placement is a bit better his top of d tier it's not that bad like he's disadvantaged he's, he's this logo he's the king of disadvantaged heroes so I still don't think he's as bad as people say. Like, some people might think him here. But no, he has some potential. You just have to, you know, you just have to also take into account his lack of open, which some people overestimate. I used to underestimate. I think, like, this year where I placed him this time is actually somewhat uh, decent placement. Now let's uh, put the other heroes and let's be done with it. Uh, Centurion. Crazy guy, everybody knows Centurion. Can say crazy guy. Warlord, let's see what we have. Warlord, Valkyrie, Nabushi, Highlander. And now we have the E tier, the tradition. 
it's always like this it's <laughs> these guys are always gonna be the bottom and yeah this is baraki tier list year five season four ladies and gentlemen get a picture this is the big deal my friend obviously any placement from here i would love to discuss in the comment section below try to make this video a bit shorter by only explaining the heroes that are a merit and explaining other than that if you want to see other explaining for other heroes and placements you can look uh in my older tier list because they still apply and obviously the all heroes matchups uh spreadsheet will be sh shared in the description and yeah thank you very much for watching this is baraki tier list year 5 season 4 i hope you enjoyed it i hope you agree and disagree with it i don't want you to uh just agree with everything i say i would love if you'd make some thoughts of your own and also share your opinion on this if you think i made a mistake it's po possibly i would this is not reality this is just my opinion in the combination with some other competitive players so yeah thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time bye bye